Human rights lawyer Inibaye Efiong joins me now to discuss these charges against Namdi Kanu. Good to have you join us, um, Inibaye Efiong. All right, so talk to us about what you make of the rearrest of Namdi Kanu, um, the manner in which he was rearrested. It was so quiet, no one knew about it until an announcement was made. And then he was taken directly to the court. So talk to us about what you make of that process. Well, for me at this point, I think it is still in a bit uh, early in the day to draw a conclusion on the legality of his arrest because at this moment, the federal government has not really clearly, I stand to be corrected, given us clarity on the circumstances of his arrest, whether he was extradited to Nigeria, all that they have told us is that he was arrested based on the collaborative efforts of intelligence and security agencies. Of course, there are reports in the media that he may have been arrested in Kenya, he may have been arrested in some other place. The United Kingdom has come out to say he was not arrested within their country. So for me, I think for the sake of transparency, for the sake of accountability, and also to dispel speculations and rumors, I expect the Minister of Information or the Attorney General to come out clearly, in clear language, to explain to Nigerians the circumstances under which Namdi Kanu was arrested, because we know clearly he was not arrested within the territory of Nigeria. But that is on the one hand. The second point is that Namdi Kanu has a subsisting charge pending at the Federal High Court before Honorable Justice Bintan Yaku in Abuja, where he was charged on certain, you know, treasonable charges. He had, of course, John Bell following the invasion of his home by the military, which he said was responsible for his inability to stand trial. So now that he has been brought back to the country, it is expected that the trial will resume. It is expected that the government will now present whatever evidence they have against him to show whether he committed an offense or not. But I do expect that his rights will be respected. He will be given fair hearing. It will be treated properly in the custody of the SSS and will be given access to legal representation. You see, because part of the problem we have with this case is that while the government has filed charges at the, in a court of competent jurisdiction, the same government is also taking some prejudicial steps that tend to suggest whether this is really a serious legal trial or a political rigmarole. I give two examples. The first is that Nam Kanu's lawyer has come under intense attack by the army is currently being wanted. If that has been invaded, we have seen evidence of that. Why will you be attacking the lawyer to somebody that you want to try on such serious charges? That gives the impression that the state is not really interested in prosecuting him. Because if they are interested in prosecution, bring the evidence before the court, show that he has committed an offense. Secondly, I also expect that now that the government has brought him into custody, the government will also explore the other aspect of the matter, which is the political agitation in the Southeast. Because I do not believe for a second that the main rearrest of Nam De Kanu and subjecting him to trial is going to totally stop the agitation for, in the, for independence, for a separate country, or self-determination in the South. Uh, before we get to um, that agitation, I mean, that agitation is not just now in the, in the Southeast alone. It's, it's almost in every part of the country. But before we get there, Let's look at the fact that um, the, the, uh, the, the Minister of Culture, Lai Mohammed, Culture and Information, Lai Mohammed, has said that um, he has assured that it, the government will come down hard on all collaborators involved with um, the IPOP group and his leader, Nam De Kanu. He also said, and that's irrespective of their standing in the society. But there are those who have asked the federal government to tread with caution or move with caution in this case. And when you look at that in line with that... Um, advisor or coming from several quarters what does caution mean in this situation I, I believe that you know if there are people who are complicit if there are collaborators if there are accessories after the fact if there are people who aided or abetted in the commission of any offense there is nothing wrong in bringing them and subjecting them to the criminal justice system that is the whole essence of the rule of law that nobody is above the law, nobody is superior to the laws of the land. So if the government is convinced beyond media trial, beyond press statement, that there are really evidence of commission of offense, they should file charges in court, 
they should allow the process to run. Because do not forget, at the end of the day, let Mohammed is entitled to his opinion, Abu Bakr Malami is entitled to his opinion, President Buhari, they are all entitled to their opinion, but it is only a court of competent jurisdiction that can make a determination of guilt. Because by virtue of Section 36, of Section 5 of the Constitution, there is the conditional right to presumption of innocence, which inures to the benefit of Namdi Kanu, to the benefit of every other person that stands trial in a court. So let the court process run its court. That is the point that I am making. Let the process be allowed to run smoothly. There is no need to interfere with the judicial process. If we have arrested him and have subjected him to trial, allow the trial to run its course. Because we have seen in other instances, like the Shawares case, for example, when even after charges have been filed to date, the government is still struggling to call one witness over a year after they had filed charges. So let this not just be a political thing. If there are really credible evidence of commission of a crime, let that evidence be presented in court. But do not forget that we cannot stop the agitation, as I said, by merely putting the leader of the agitation. And that's where I was going to go next, because um, there was, this could go either way. It could, we could see, because um, we've seen, well, a level of reduction in, in attacks in the southeast in, some, in, in, in the past few, few weeks. Um, we could see supporters take up to the streets. We hope that doesn't happen. We could also see attacks reduced further. We could see agitations, you know, increase. So this could go anyway, irrespective, uh, depending on how, you know, the, 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 the mood of the people in, in the southeast and just generally in the society. So what do you think government, how government should handle the situation in a way that people do not begin to see it as, oh, this is a witch hunt, and then lead to, you know, maybe uh, uh, f further agitations. The, the strategy of the federal government currently has only ended up inflaming more tension, inflaming passions. Look at, for example, what happened overnight, early this morning, in the house of son Boho. You know, we are now seeing reports, we are now seeing videos that his residence was attacked by persons suspected to be military. And... I do not believe that this is how to go about this matter. I do not believe that you can quell these agitations by deployment of military might. The solution to a political agitation has to be political. Engage with the people who are protesting. Not all of us subscribe to, to the, what these people are fighting for. I personally do not, do not believe you know, in Biafra or splitting Nigeria. But those who believe in it, those who agitate for it, those who want, you know, that that's that thing that they want to do to our republic they want biafra republic they are nigerian they have the right to self-determination you cannot destroy a right that has been granted under international instruments international convention and nigeria is the signatory to by military might talk to them engage them talk to these people now can ask yes he can be engaged have a conversation with him because beyond isolating the leader there are people who believe in that ideology. You cannot deal, deal ideology with AK-47. That is the truth of the matter. Because even if you take Adnan Bikano, another person will still arise. This is because this message that the Adnan Bikano propagates, whether you believe in it or not, whether you subscribe to, to it or not, a lot of people identify with that message. And that is a significant portion of our population. You cannot stick so, uh, that conversation, dialogue, and engagement. by merely isolating the leader for punishment. So I just, uh, I just, just a, a, in a second, just want to yes or no. I just want a yes or no answer. Uh, for someone who has jumped bail, like Nam the Kano, is he entitled to bail now? Yes or no? I, I think if it, was, a, it can go either ways. I'd right. rather say like that. It can go either ways. All right. Human rights lawyer Nibaye F. Young, thanks for talking to us. Thank you for having me.